H-Town's third overall draft pick from last year only made second team all-rookie in 2023, but what we saw from the just turned 20-year-old out of Auburn in this year's summer league was different. The 6'11", 220-pound sharpshooting shot creator has upside that in terms of players who've rocked Houston threads in the past relates to the modern-day version of Tracy McGrady. Jabari Smith Jr. averaged 35.5 points over the two games in Vegas he suited up in, and while he didn't have to play in the summer league based off the fact that he showed out as a rookie, he maturely opted to use every rep to his advantage in order to solidify his game as a vastly improved version of itself in year two. With how Jabari takes advantage of angles by using his body to fend off contact, while this video stacks him up against rookie T-Mac, Smith Jr. can be thought of as a McGrady-Carmelo-Anthony hybrid. However, comparing Jabari's rookie stats to a player who made three All-Star games in Houston being T-Mac, and albeit in significantly more minutes played, and 19-year-old Bari averaged five more points than an 18-year-old McGrady, and Smith Jr. also came close to doubling up Tracy in rebounds per game. That said, Tracy's efficiency was much better, and with the at-the-time Toronto Raptors, he had a much smaller role. Similarly to T-Mac, JSJ seems to have the clutch gene as Jabari hit the game winner to open the Rockets Summer League, which was an off-balance catch-and-shoot release in traffic deep range bomb with 0.6 seconds left. Mind-boggling stuff. What'll get overlooked based on that shot is the game-saving block Jabari had the possession before that as the man's capable of making timely plays on both ends. However, his most recent performance to make Houston 2-0 down in Vegas was even better. The Auburn Assassin flipped the switch to beast mode from start to finish, absolutely dominating by posting 38 points on 13 for 24 shooting from the field, which included three triples to go along with seven boards, six dimes, and a block. Most jaw-dropping amidst that performance was when JSJ put his fellow top three overall pick, albeit from two years before he was drafted, and James Wiseman in the blender, saucing him up off the bounce before trash talking him on his trot back on defense, that was cold. Jabari's blend of forceful aggression, innovative creation, and polished perimeter skills are quite literally scary as hell for opposing defenders. Now that Smith has got his handle to this dangerous of a level, he's almost impossible to stay in front of when you also factor in his strength. His ability to size up his matchup well beyond the arc, keep his bounce under control before transitioning to the post where he can get it as deep as he wants on the block before having the adequate mix of balance and mechanics to drift away for high arcing faders is straight up unstoppable, at least for summer league defenders. Whether he's forced to transition to the block off the bounce or seal his matchup in order to receive clean catches, his improved shooting comfortability allows him to transition into jumpers seamlessly from the post. Jabari's more than capable of crossing the timeline like a point forward for coast-to-coast -coast off the bounce drives featuring dicey guard-like combinations and forceful head-down duck-in attacks. In transition, after galloping up the court with long strides, the body control on this and one gave me flashbacks of watching Prime Carmelo. Working off the ball in the half court, after a saucy moving behind the back from Tari Eason, the Tari to Bari connections completed after Smith Jr. roams the baseline to catch and put home a monster one-handed hammer. Operating the O as the point forward, the 20-year-old's going to get the switch onto the smaller Jaden Ivey before showing his fellow youngin how to dance with a mix-em-up between the legs hezzy to his offhand, preceded by a shoot over the top of him contested triple. If you're too small, he shoots over the top of you. If you're too big, you're likely too slow, which is exemplified by Wiseman not being fast enough to handle this quick catch and fade away from the baseline. Given most, if not every play you've witnessed so far was manufactured individually as a creating forward, it's incredible that what we've seen up to this point in the video is only about half of Jabari's repertoire. In a Silas run offense last year, he acted as a screener for a large portion of his offensive possessions. This play sees him combine his traditional and modern day propensity. First, he sets the big body and pops like a traditional big, then he drives into a niftily baited jab step and flies to the hoop with exceptional running long jump like a modern day big. More modern day artillery on this bucket as right after he catches it at the left arc, 
Jabari creates an optical illusion by not making it clear whether his jab step is being executed to the right or left side. At first glance, it seems this triple threat is angled towards his left, but little does the defender, or anyone for that matter, know that his left foot has actually been planted as his pivot, and the jab is actually occurring with his right foot. Since Jabari catches and plants his lead foot simultaneously, it's a legal move and not a travel. After a lone jab right, he sweeps through to his left, transitions to the post, and watch this beautiful baseline shimmy and fade like a prime Kevin Garnett to niftily knock it through twine. That extension yet low center of gravity on the fadeaway is as good as it gets right there. Proof that Jabari's been putting in reps in the weight room, though, is this monster end-to-end -end baseball pass to find Jermaine Samuels to beat the quarter number three buzzer. This man was receiving a ton of hate on Twitter during the first half of the Rockets' opening Summer League game, but those haters almost immediately ate their words when he turned up his game and started going off against Portland like you just saw him do against Detroit. Post-game, Jabari would say that he's tired of losing, ironically directly in front of now-fired head coach Steven Silas. Meanwhile, regarding the speculation about why he should or shouldn't play in the Summer League, he was Bari on that. Um, I'm 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't I play Summer League? You know, we were... 22 and 60 last year. I don't feel like I'm in a in a um, position to to just sit out. You know what I'm saying? My rookie year wasn't perfect. It wasn't great. So why not get out here and get reps and play with reps, play with play with my new teammates, play with my new coaches, and just just get a feel. You know what I'm saying? I feel like any second year guy, um, any second year guy should feel open to play just because of the, the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You get to play in front of reps. You get to play in front of a crowd. You get to play a real basketball game against NBA players. So you usually don't get that great. So I'm just, just just take advantage of it. I gave you T-Mac, Mello, and even mentioned KG at one point in this vid, but let me know who Jabari Smith Jr. reminds you of the most down below in the comments. Taken into account, Cam Whitmore also dominated in the second game for Houston down in Vegas and is resembling a complete draft steal, plus the development of Tari Eason as well, and the Rockets are becoming one of my favorite NBA teams at the moment. Nevertheless, Raphael Stone drafted a special one in Jabari, and new coach Ime Udoka has a big responsibility in terms of Bari's development. Tari Eason and Jabari were so impressive, they were named to the Athletics all too good for Summer League team, one of the reasons they'll be resting for the rest of Houston's time in Las Vegas. Until next time, this was D-Flow.